the downside risk seems minimal relative to upside potential, especially in silver. What is the catalyst for gold and silver to move higher? Well, I th- the, the obvious one is um, when the Fed pivots. Everyone knows that, or even begins to pivot. Chairman Powell just spoke this morning. I think he struck a more hawkish tone than many were anticipating, uh, maybe including myself as well. But you know what they say and what they do are, are going to do are often two very different things. Remember, the, these are the same people who were saying inflation is transitory just a few months ago, and they can change what they're saying on a dime. So you know he, he's saying things like you know, are we're going to fight inflation at all costs? I don't think that's the exact words he used, but that's the kind of message he was trying to convey. Well, are you, are you going to do that if the stock market's down 30, 40% and real estate continues to decline and um, you know uh, interest rates continue to rise? Uh, and I think the answer to that is probably no. And that's the big ca- next big catalyst for silver and gold. Well, it's, it's hard to predict what the exact catalyst is going to be. Um, it could be any of those things you said, or it could be something out of left field, kind of like a black swan event. But w- one thing I know is they're the Fed is always reactive and not proactive, and they tend to wait until people are begging for it. They want that monetary, you know, heroin, so to speak. And you know, you'll see when you see free market capitalists, supposedly free market capitalists, and people on the right who, you know, rail against um, government intervention. Well, they're gonna when things get bad enough, they beg for it. They beg for the stimulus checks, just like they did back in March of 2020. So, you know, how long are they going to wait? I don't know, but I know that they, well, I have a high level of confidence that they're going to pivot. And, you know, history suggests that's what they always do. They always debase the currency. That's just what always happens. And uh, despite what they say, they're going to do. Yeah, I I think, you know, everyone wants to talk about boosting asset prices, you know, uh, stocks, real estate, all these things, um, interest rates. And that's true. But here's, I think, the biggest reason they, they absolutely have to. And that's to fund government spending. We're running trillion dollar plus deficits in perpetuity. Who is going to fund that those deficits, especially at artificially low interest rates? China is stepping back. Saudi Arabia is stepping back. You know, you've got all these big buyers stepping back, and the Fed is always the buyer of last resort. Someone is going to have to fund those deficits. Otherwise, the alternative is we do actual austerity here, which. I can all but guarantee that's not going to happen. You know, the, there's no way these politicians are going to tell grandma and grandpa, hey, sorry, you know, Social Security is going to be cut. Um, all these unfunded contingent liabilities, sorry, we can't afford it. Uh, so, you know, th- they're going to uh, continue to debase, debase the currency. The Fed is going to step in and prop up um, markets and, you know, be the uh, a buyer of last resort at these treasury auctions. Well, it, if you believe the name, then yeah, sure. We don't have anything to worry about. But unfortunately, the name of these acts always has the exact opposite of the desired effect. The Department of Energy was created to reduce oil prices. Well, what have oil prices done since then? Uh, the government did, went on the war on drugs. Well, what's happened with that? Drug use has spiraled out of control. The war on poverty, more people are poor than ever. Um, so whatever they do, you know, the Patriot Act is another one, most unpatriotic act, act we've probably ever had. So it, it just always does have the uh, exact opposite of the effect that the name implies. But what is inflation? Inflation is an increase in the money supply. That is the definition of inflation. And government spending is inflationary. That's what this act does. It increases government spending. And they say, oh, yeah, well, we're going to offset it with tax increases. Uh, th- that math doesn't work. And um, you know, and they also say, we're going to hire all these IRS agents with and give them guns, and they're going to go around... <laughs> collecting uh you know um people who are cheating on their taxes and that's going to pay for these things um uh, i highly doubt that in the short term short term predictions are are really hard but i'm highly confident as we've been saying for over well over a year now we think the trend is going to be inflationary with deflationary impulses along the way so we're probably due for uh, just a sharp deflationary impulse where things really sell off sharp and that would probably be a catalyst for the fed to pivot um but you know as far as changing and fixing the system um you know, unfortunately, I think we're kind of beyond that. You know, I try and focus on things that we can control, and that's you know preparing for, you know, uh, volatility and you know, uh, kind of crisis really in in the markets, financial markets, and you know, um, all, all the things that we've talked about in the past. Um, but you know, I think sil- with silver and gold, we're probably much closer to a bottom than any kind of top. I mean, downside risk seems minimal relative to upside potential, especially in silver. What is the catalyst for? gold and silver to move higher? Well, I th- the, the obvious one is um, 
when the Fed pivots. Everyone knows that, or even begins to pivot. And people define pivot as a different thing. That can mean a lot of different things to different people. And to some people, that means, well, when they go to full-on money printing and quantitative easing and cutting it or cutting interest rates again, yeah, that's coming. But I wouldn't necessarily define that as a pivot. In other words, I don't think we have to wait that long. I think once they just reduce the pace of their interest rate hikes and start to signal that the we're kind of over the hump and they're going to eventually start, um, you know, lowering rates again. I think that's would be the pivot to me because that's where they're pivoting the trend or the trajectory of their policy decisions. And, you know, I, I think a decent, a good estimate for a time frame it would be October, November, but you know, that, that, that could be off by a, m- a month or two in either direction, or maybe even a, a three or four months. But I think that's somewhere around there is when that starts to happen. Like you said, if if I were <laughs> pulling the strings and I were running for re-election and I were in office as a Democrat, I would probably want to get it. My goal would be to get as inflation as low as I can. You know, asset prices suffer in the meantime, and then kind of pivot into those elections so that asset prices maybe start to uh, rebound. And you can so that way you can claim victory on inflation, and the trend would be back up in assets. But that's pure speculation on my part. Yeah, as we, we've talked about many times, you know, silver and gold, I think, is a key part of the plan, but it's not the panacea. It's not the all-encompassing solution. You know, trying to develop multiple streams of income is good. Being resilient, um, I, I think, um, you know, eliminating consumer debt, you're changing your lifestyle decisions to, you know, prioritize what really matters to you and your spending in alignment, put your spending in alignment with your values, um, things like that. Um, I think the the core, the key word is resilience. You know, I think... Uh, We're going to need to be resilient for what's coming in the next few years. 